Mizukami fans rejoice. It looks like the team behind Sengoku Yoku are doing a really good job. And that is great to know following the travesty that was Biscuit Hammer. They brutalized that child. It's not even funny. But yes, for those who don't know, Mizukami is a really talented writer. I absolutely loved Planet With. He's a writer that's really good at giving a simple concept and then slowly kind of unraveling and peeling away the layers of his storytelling to reveal deeper plot lines and character developments that I can't get enough of. And yes, like I said, unfortunately, Biscuit Hammer... I stopped watching it because that <laughs> it was just absolutely brutalized. But it does look like, thankfully, there's a lot of interviews and whatnot for the team behind Sengoku Yoku, where it does look like this team is really passionate about this project. They like Mizukami's work, and they really want to do a proper job with it. And it looks like, yes, obviously going three cores, <laughs> really long adaptation. I think it's a full adaptation, so... I cannot wait to see where the series goes, and I've been absolutely excited for it. I think my fears were quickly squashed by the fact that at least White Fox is working on it, so I know they're at least going to not do a biscuit hammer job on this, but I just got done with the first episode, and let's just jump into my thoughts of it. Sengoku Yoko opens up with a man that is on a warrior's pilgrim, and we find out later on that, yes, his father used to be a samurai. Everybody looked down upon him. He's extremely weak, but he's always been trying to get stronger, so he's traveling around. At the time that we open up the show, he has currently been watching some bandits and as he's getting ready to jump out there and attack, two individuals show up out of nowhere, Tama and Jinka. Now, very quickly, Jinka knocks out all the men. He uses this these talisman with his spiritual powers and just summons these golems that just knock them all out. Much to the anger of Tama, who's standing right next to him, that says we're supposed to ask where their leader's at. Why'd you knock them out? Okay, whatever. We have to go find them. Seeing this, Sinzuke, which is this warrior that's on this pilgrimage, he's like, Wow, how the hell they do that? So he's been watching them. And then the entire time, Tama, the girl in this group, knows that he's watching them. At some point, gets annoyed by the fact that he keeps hearing him in the distance and decides to chuck a rock at him. Well, Sinsuke comes out and says, yes, I'm on a warrior's pilgrim. How the hell did you do that? Tama introduced herself as a fox spirit. And Jinka introduced himself as an immortal spirit. Which, yes, to Shinsuke is very comical. He laughs at them. <laughs> Well, Shinsuke said that he knows where the bandit's leader's at, so they decide to follow him all the way to where the bandits are at. At that point, as they're talking, eventually the bandits find them, and Tama says, okay, time to do what we usually do. Which is, Tama basically telling the bandit leader, stop being bad. <laughs> like, that was their whole plan, is to confront the bandit leader and tell him, your villainy is bad, you need to stop. And of course, yes, everybody laughs at her. Like, what the hell are you talking about? We're bandits. Of course, we're going to steal stuff. It works for us. Well, Thomas says, don't worry. I have an explanation. I can convince you. And so she goes on this long tirade about how, yes, it works out now, but eventually you're going to grow old. And when you grow old, you're no longer going to have the strength in order to steal. And then you're going to be miserable and you're going to have the sins of your past that's going to weigh down upon you. So everybody work in harmony. Everybody live together, support each other. And then when you get old, People will support you. It's it's a foolproof plan. And again, everybody laughs at them. <laughs> but this leads to them all attacking Tama and all them. Quickly, Jinka is just knocking them all out. Even Shinsuke gets involved, is able to split one of the people, one of their helmets right in half, which kind of impresses Tama. At which point, Shinsuke goes after the leader and a demon appears, a Katawara. They're basically otherworldly creatures, spirits of the dead, incarnated entities. Inhuman beings. Anything that's like inhuman is classified as a katawara. And so when Tama asks Jinka, hey, can you handle this? Jinka says, I might need to do a spiritual transformation. At which point Tama creates a wound on her hand, Jinka licks it, and then becomes a katawara. It's essentially a technique that harmonizes with the katawara spirit, which again is Tama, a fox spirit, which allows them to transform into one of them. So he becomes basically a nine-tailed fox that's going around just destroying everything. Following the fight, obviously, Shinsuke is enamored by these two. Like, they're incredibly powerful. He wants to learn more about them. So he starts following them everywhere. Eventually, they come to this one town where there's these monks that fight bad Katawara. And there's apparently a Katawara nearby that is that smashed one of their monks. <laughs> so they want to go get revenge for it. And during this time, we have this little moment where Shinsuke is sort of trying to figure out what he wants to do going forward. Again, he's on a journey to become stronger, to prove himself, to make a name for himself. And he has two options here. He has the monks here that are really strong. He's got these two, Tama and Jinka, that are incredibly strong. And he's obviously acknowledging the fact that his own skills, he was able to make a demon appear or Katawara appear. And he wants to get to the point where he can strike them down, strike down evildoers. And so Tama is kind of baiting him, hey, you want to join us and reform the world? That seems to be their purpose as they want to reform the world. They Tama and Jinka are on a journey to essentially pull mankind 
out of the darkness that it's in. Mainly because Tama loves humans, even though her sibling, Jinka, hates them. And eventually they confront this Katawara and Tama points out, you know, this is the world darkness that we're in. Do you really want to join us? And it pretty much wraps up right there. Like I said before, they're doing an incredible job with this show so far. I think the style of it, the visual directing and everything is doing a really great job. Now, this isn't Utfutable, but this is White Fox. This is kind of what I expect from White Fox to have the quality and whatnot in here. Everything's moving great. They have some really great panning shots. Yes, a lot of the action shots are kind of action steals, but for the most part, it's got a lot of fluidity to it and the characters and the animation, a lot of detail being given to the characters like Tama, who has the ears kind of constantly twitching, which is super cute. And everybody's doing a great job voicing. Gotta point out, yes, Tama, <laughs> Tama's Seiyu stood out like a sore thumb <laughs> when she is in front of all the bandits and she yells about how they have to all work together and her voice like echoes in the distance. Just before then, I actually noticed it, but that was like the thing that solidified it for me. Tama is the same Seiyu as Aisha. Yes, Yuki Takada. The moment she yelled that, <laughs> I could hear the echo and all I could think of was Aisha yelling hentai des, 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 des. Um, they're doing a great job so far and they have a lot of character animations and the the portrayal of the characters himself. I even looked at the manga because I have not read the manga. So I'm going into this one just completely fresh. And it looks like they cover pretty much everything. There is a little censorship. I will admit that there is obviously when the monk is first crushed by this Katawara, they didn't show where, yes, literally you can see the splatter on the ground. And additionally, Sensuke, when he is contemplating if he wants to follow Tama and Jinka, he's thinking about, yes, I just killed this guy by splitting his helmet in half. And yes, it shows a brief shot of, you know, face down and blood coming up. So there is a little bit of like violence censorship, but this isn't the case like, you know, Biscuit Hammer, where Biscuit Hammer was a lot of etchy humor that was in it that was completely removed. This is just strictly violence uh, censorship that's being done here, which is probably due to the broadcast block in Japan, but it doesn't bother me too much. Th this isn't like stuff that's ruining the show, unless later on that violence is part of the story, then maybe it'll become more of a struggle. I mean, you can make an argument for the fact that Shinsuke is literally thinking in his head about the fact that he killed somebody, but it's not as if he's contemplating the fact that he has taken a life. It's more of a fact that that's what showed him he has the strength to move forward. Not so much that the violence itself is affecting him. So I don't really feel like censorship in that way affects it unless it is a story beat, in which point, yes, portrayal of that and removal of that does technically ruin it. But like I said, everything else seemed to be working really well for it. I am kind of curious which direction the show will go. Obviously, the whole point here is that Tama is an actually a, a fox spirit. She's lived a long time. There's a lot of jokes about the fact that, you know, you look like a child. And she's like, I've been I've been around the block a few times. Jinka, again, has always this animosity towards human, which is odd because it seems like he looks like a human. But it does imply, again, that he is an immortal being. He does live for a long time. So I'll be curious to see what his story is about. Tama seems like it's more about the fact that she has this care and this love for humans and wants to do things to benefit humans. It does look like they're kind of living in sort of the central area. You have the world of humans, you have the world of the Katawara, and it seems like Tama and Jinka are sort of mediators in the middle. Because even though they're in this one place where there's all these monks that fight Katawara, they don't fight all Katawara. These monks specifically build up their spiritual energy in order to fight bad ones. So they're sitting there and having tea along with Tama and them because Tama isn't a bad spirit. But I would be curious to find out what, why exactly Tama cares so much for the humans because they are technically mediating for the Katawara because as they go to fight this Katawara that killed this monk, Jinka and Tama are trying to find out why this particular uh, Katawara is going crazy. So it's not as if, okay, monks, let's go, let's go kill it because obviously it killed a monk. They're trying to figure out why it killed the monk. But the emphasis seems to be here that Tama and Jinka are sort of in this this world that Shinsuke has not seen before, which is the world of these Katawara spirits and the humans coexisting, so to speak. I will admit that the only place where I think this show is not quite doing it for me yet, yet, is the humor. I, I, I think the, the humor so far has been very subtle. It's been very mild, which I don't know if Mizukami for the series was really going for a really comical series. I mean, it does have a butt of a joke here always, which is Shinsuke and the animosity that Jinka has for humans, Tama constantly bonking Jinka over the head. I don't know if it's really going for a heavy comedy series or if it's just kind of something that's in there. It doesn't really even have a comedy classification. So the comedy might just be something to keep the, the mood up as the series goes along. So I'm not too bothered by that and I'm not having the expectation for that. 
my expectation is going to be more in the realm of something like Planet With that I've actually watched all the way through, where it's going to be more about the story and the characters that's going to be the actual strong plot lines. But like I said before, super happy this is going to be a 37 episode series, a three core running series. Hopefully it's a consecutive core. I think they've worked on quite a bit of it before it even started. So I'll be happy to see kind of how it plays out. And again, enjoy this entire ride. Hopefully it's got enough for me to talk about on a weekly basis. I would love to cover this weekly because I've been super excited for the series, but uh, we'll see if it actually has enough to really kind of cover on a weekly basis. And I might actually do that. Obviously the thing that's been carrying the show for me so far is Tama. Tama is super fun, super cute. Uh, she just has so much energy. It's one of those kind of things where it is a funny kind of oddity in the world itself is this fox spirit that seems to have a positive nature and seems to completely think that whatever logic they have in their head is foolproof. <laughs> Yet when they try to apply that logic to humans that they love so much, they completely disregard it. So it'd be kind of funny to see how that chemistry plays out. We essentially have the the guy that's trying to, to work hard to be stronger, but failing miserably. You have the fox spirit that's kind of a little bit oblivious to the unfortunate negative nature of human beings and technically Katawara. And then you have Jinka who is just absolutely hates all humans and is just being pulled around by Tama, respecting what Tama wishes, but at the same time, always kind of getting ahead of themselves. So it might make a really fun chemistry. I know there's some other characters involved and I'm excited to see where them kind of join the fray. But for now, that that is my thoughts on Sengoku Yoko. I really, really enjoyed it so far and I cannot wait for more. I am just, I'm just thrilled that <laughs> Mizukami is getting a proper adaptation after Biscuit Hammer, but we'll see. I mean, they could totally fall apart after this and completely ruin my expectations, but... Yeah, that's my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment. Let me know the thought of the series so far. If you're going to be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button's got my content. I have news, reviews, fresh impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, but it does. And y'all take care.